Hello everybody, welcome back to the Compulsive Survival Builder. I wanted to do an update because, like I said before, I've been kind of combating the zero kilobyte save error with some of the new mods that I loaded. Uh, and it kind of got me thinking about some things. Um, I was also looking around on YouTube um, with some of the other channels that suggest mod load order or talk about mod load order, um, it surprises me how few of them have any idea what they're doing, but still, maybe I'm just looking in the wrong places, I don't know. Um, and that's fine, if you found helpful resources, then that's great. But in any case, I was trying to help some of the people out in the comments, and in doing that, I looked at the, um, mod, the Fallout 4 mod load order framework that I've linked on my channel by Odd Little Turtle. Um, and I noticed that, you know, I think some of my mods were out of place. So I did do a little bit of rearranging and I'll, I'll kind of go over a little bit, not only some of the load order changes that I made, but I know that in my last video, I talked about some of the new mods that I uploaded. And I think that I found the culprit mod that was triggering that zero kilobyte save error for me. Now, if you get a mod, or maybe even a combination of mods, or some mod conflicts, or something, whatever, if you get something that's triggering that error on the PS4, that doesn't automatically mean that you've got like a bad mod, or even that you got a bad install on that mod, or even that it's in the wrong place in your load order. It could just mean that based on the load order you have and the mods you have selected that that one just doesn't fit in the mix so sometimes you got to just kind of say goodbye to to the ones that just don't work with the rest of the stuff you're trying to do um the one i got rid of was the um the one right up that was right up here that unlocked my settlement workbenches without doing the quest. I forget exactly what it was called, but what I noticed was I, I, I've been playing, I've been building, I've been trying to take care of some things on my game, and I've been saving kind of often to because I knew I was running into that zero kilobyte save error, and what I noticed was that twice I went over to Abernathy Farm, accessed the workbench, cleaned it out, cleaned, cleaned all the junk out of the house. I didn't scrap it over there because I don't know, I, I play semi-immersively, and there's people living there, so once again, I'm a dork, whatever, but I like to immerse myself in the game, a lot of my mods are about immersion, so I wanted to leave them their settlement, <laughs> plus I think I'm going to have them farm stuff for me, so whatever, um, in any case, twice I went over and did that, and then came back into my home, which is the Underground Railroad here, and immediately ran into the zero kilobyte save error. So there was two new mods that I had installed. I narrowed it down to that because I had been there before in one of the previous playthroughs. If you've seen any of the other videos on my channel, then, then you know we already went to Abernathy Farm. But I'm playing a brand new playthrough here and trying to catch up so I can do the Let's Plays again. And it was that one. It was accessing the workbench. And then I had used those detection shades. And... They're nice. I like them. Um, they do drop the frame rate a little bit, um, which is kind of understandable. They're changing all the visuals and they're trying to map things for you. Um, I don't know if people run into that in general with the targeting HUDs, but in any case, it was, it was either that one or the, the settlement workbenches that uh, was apparently causing the problem, or at least triggering the problem. So I disabled the workbenches one and then went down there and it turned out I had already accessed that workbench so I still have access to it even though I don't have the mod anymore because it just it just still saves that information for you. But I cleaned it out and I took all the the junk out of the out of the house and all the stuff and the the things in the containers and all that stuff and I trekked my ass back to my house and then I didn't run into the zero kilobyte saver. Now, I'm not saying that that decision that I just made to get rid of that mod um, absolutely 100% fixed the problem. 
I don't know yet. I'm still going to have to keep playing through. But I was able to get a different response from my game by doing the same thing for a third time, which was travel down to Abernathy Farm and loot it and come back home. Now, like I said before, before I removed that mod, um, I did that twice. And both times I got the zero kilobyte error as soon as I got home. Um, I noticed things stopped making noise, all kinds of stuff. And I was just like, dang it. Once again, zero kilobyte saver. And I checked and cert, sure enough, I had it. So the first thing I did was I, I did my, um, my reset thing that I discussed in the last video to, to base, to just get past the error, but I had been saving more regularly, so I didn't have to fall back quite as far in my saves. Um, and then when I got back into the game, I disabled that mod and started my game up again. I just disabled it because you don't necessarily want to just straight delete things out of your load order. That can mess with your game just as much as like loading too many mods. So I disabled it and left it where it was in the load order. And it still had to redo the, the game files and all that stuff. But then I came in and I just played a little while without it active. And I didn't experience the error. So I just went ahead and deleted it at that, I saved, and then I went out and deleted it at that point, and then I cleared my catch again. I didn't rebuild my database after that, but, um, and so far, I've been building a little bit in my house, and so far, I haven't run into the error again. And that doesn't mean it's gone, um, but, you know, step in the right direction, I hope. So we'll see. Um, in any case... Uh, the other thing I did, like I said, was rearrange my load order a little bit. Now, rearranging your load order isn't as delicate a process necessarily as like downloading um, uh, and enabling your mods. If you've got a save going on and you're not really adding any mods and you're not really making too many changes, you can you can generally speaking rearrange your load order pretty good especially if you feel like you're putting it into a better kind of scenario um by using like the framework or something like that then then you can load your save file up and it's that save file still dependent on all of these same mods and all the same mod information is still in your game but they're just in an order that's probably a bit more functional so you shouldn't have to worry about like game crashes and stuff. I did have one crash when I loaded and then exited out to the main screen and then tried to load again right away, but I just closed out of the game and tried loading up a, a fresh that fre same fresh save again, and everything's fine. And and like I've said before, getting a crash here and there, especially if you've just made changes to your mods at all. It's not uncommon. Don't panic. That doesn't mean that you did something wrong. So let me go over quick um, some of the changes I remember. One of the things was I had put the interior mods up here with with what was supposed to be new land masses. I think it was bet between these two or something like that. Uh, like I think they would go before faction and and NPC overhauls and things like that. So, or AI overhaul, I can't remember, right off the top of my head. But while I was commenting on some of the other videos, um, in order to help somebody out that was asking like a specific question about load order, I went into the framework setup, and instead of just looking at the, at the, um, the basic list of how, the, what order they should go in, if you, if you actually dive into that document, they've got examples of mods that go into those different sections. And one of the examples that they gave was Subway Runner, which is in my, my group of interior mods, because I saw in another um, thread that if you put all the interior mods in a certain order, then they work really well together. But you also still have to, yeah, here they are. You still have to put, uh, put them all together like this in that order. Now, Subway Runner, it said you should place it with new player homes. And that got me thinking about how I had interpreted what kinds of mods I was using. And I'd kind of flown by the seat of my pants and what I remembered about all of them. Um, I probably get a got a little cocky in the whole situation, uh, overconfident maybe. 
and just started deciding that I knew where they went best. And so, eh, I humbled myself. I went back. I really looked into the document and I rearranged some stuff. Um, uh, those were one of them. Those are supposed to go with your new player homes. Um, now I understand. And, and here's the thing. It calls it new player homes, but really what it's adding is, is it's just changing the landscape of existing buildings. And it's not like necessarily loading like a whole new game area. And that's, that's kind of what that document is considering a player home. Now, Underground Railroad and Remote Cabin are kind of doing that same thing, but I, I moved them up a little. I know I mentioned that Remote Cabin needed to go before immersive looting. Uh, those still seem to be working pretty well in conjunction in this order. But um, these were more like those kinds of changes. Um, so really, like... I don't know, I guess it's still kind of up for, for interpretation. They're more like changes to existing areas. The remote cabin doesn't actually load a new game area. Uh, it just adds into the game area. So, and that's what these change. They change game area. Um, little, still a little about interpretation, but this, this seems stable so far. Um, I changed out my ballistic weave because this is Andrew CX's version. Uh, the other one I had was a lot smaller. It was working, as far as I know, but Andrew CX is a super smart professional modder. He's the one that did. Um, he's the one that did UCO. He's the one that did USO. Uh, I believe he did scrap that settlement, but maybe not. And he did armor weapon keywords community. That a lot of people base their weapon and armor mods on this mod. It's a framework mod. It's a master file. He's, he knows what he's doing. So I just went ahead and traded it out. I left it in the same spot and I just changed it out really quick and, and enabled it right away because I didn't want the fact that I had already added um, Ballistic Weave to some of my armors to get messed with. Like I didn't want to have it unlocked, add it, and then turn it off because I don't know what that would do. <clears throat> I moved this one down because it's more like a weapon change. Um, it has to do with the guns themselves uh, and some of the perks and stuff. So I don't know, that one's a little tough to, to call. Um, those are pretty much the same. Uh, I, I rearranged some of the building and crafting stuff because uh, once again, as I was reading these, there's there's sort of a special section for mods that add new workbenches, um, which these two do. So they are kind of settlement building mods, which are up higher. But it's that that section specifically called out for mods that add new workbenches. So none of these add new workbenches; they just add stuff to your settlement building menu. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much where these go. So I kind of inter interchanged some of the ones I had up here and moved them down here because of the description. And I just went through and read those descriptions a little more thoroughly and looked at some of the examples they were giving of mods that went in that section. So anyway, let me real quick, I'll just go slowly, because I know everybody's probably just sitting there waiting for me to do this. My current load order, and the reason I say current is because... Once again, I'm referring to the Fallout Load Order Framework by Odd Little Turtle. It's a document that I have linked on my thing. It's a document I highly recommend that you study if you're going to be messing with mods because it goes into detail exactly how to do everything that I'm talking. It's what I learned from. In addition to picking up little tidbits of information here and there, that was my degree that I got, was really thoroughly reading through that bit of information. It, it's actually quite a lot of information. Um, but one of the main points that it touches on, and if you haven't read it yet, and I've suggested it this many times, then what are you doing with your life, really? Like, what are you trusting me? Why? What do I know? Trust these guys. The odd little turtle creates mods. He's a modder. He understands this stuff way better than I do. And he wrote that, and he's endorsed on that 
document by all, all of these people. All of these people suggest that you check out his framework um, setup for Fallout 4. So don't take my word for it. Go read the document, like I said. But one of the main philosophies in it is a, mo a load order is sort of a living thing. It's never like just done. You're always kind of tweaking it. You're always thinking to yourself. You're always playing through and going, you know, I really wish the game had this kind of feature or I wish it didn't do this thing or I wish this thing was organized differently. You always get those little thoughts in your head and then maybe you look on there and you find a mod that does exactly the thing that you're talking about that you want it to do and then you try to add it to your load order. Well, that can, it can affect all kinds of things. Just slapping a mod into your load order where you think it goes, you never know what kind of effect that's going to have. And maybe it's going to con con conflict with something right next to it, or maybe it's going to conflict with something above or below it. And you need to change that load order. So don't just look at these lists that I'm giving you and go, okay, here's the Bible. He finally gave us the Bible of load orders. Because it's never going to be that. I'm going to be constantly updating these, these videos and showing what I've done, how I've tweaked it, why I tweaked it that way, what kind of effect it had, if I've been testing that particular mod, if it seems to be working correctly. I'm going to be continuing to go over this because, frankly, I can see by the analytics on my channel that's the only thing any of you care about. So, um, I am still going to build, so shut up, because that's what I like to do. And I've, I've got some people interested in my building, so nah. But... Um, I will do you the favor of scrolling through my current load order, which I think is a, is a bit more of an informed load order than the previous ones. Even if they're work if they're working for you and you don't want to mess with them, then don't. But I'm just letting you know what I'm working with right now, and it seems pretty stable. So uh, I got the patch. I got these are all the master files. Most of them snap right to the top anyway. There's nothing you can do about it. Then I still got immersion gameplay Fallout. DLC companion combat. These are my AI mods. Um, uh, I I moved NPCs travel. It's not technically a. a I kind of put it right between the AI and the new factions because it's kind of both. Um, so this is a real nice little spot for it right here. But the framework suggested it as an AI change. So I kind of sandwiched it between the AI change that I have or the the few AI changes that I have and the new factions that I have right here. But then we move on, still alien snipers, new factions, then um, patches, which is my transdogger file. That's pretty much all I got left. And then I got tweaks. Um, oh no, this is my workshop mods. Now I still put this settlements extended at the beginning. I, I was kind of looking for it. It's looking for where I should put it. I couldn't really see, I mean, it, there's not really anything in here about where he suggested in the load order. So I just kind of put it above my settlement building mods. Should It seems to be working fine. So I'm just going to leave it right there for now unless I start running into trouble. But then there's my settlement building mods, which is what this one is. I had that down further before in, in tweaks. It's really a settlement building mod. It's it's unlocking the Nuka Raider um, menu in your in your settlement building Thing, so that it should go with these uh, this add all these add to your settlement building these are the ones that add menus uh, this then we're into tweaks um, I put corpse collisions and tweaks because that really when I thought about it that's really what it is uh, cell respawn same thing maximum encounters radius increase workshop lights it's all tweak stuff then there's uh, companion NPC changes so I got those uh, this is all NPC stuff. Um, I'm not sure this death physics and gore and all. I'm not sure this has to go after the zombie walkers, but it's working kind of uh, as is after the zombie walkers. Um, they're actually kind of um, still NPC changes, but really they're more like gameplay tweaks. But we're still pretty high in the load order, and gameplay tweaks come right before them anyway. Uh, so... And I just wanted to make sure that these changes affected the zombie walkers that I was adding. So they seem to be working okay. I, sometimes I get a little bit of a slow AI response from the zombies where I'll walk up on one and he'll seem confused. 
as to exactly what it is that he wants to do or where he wants to go or if he even wants to attack me. But eventually, like, it kind of snaps too and he, he comes around and, and starts behaving the way I expect him to. Then we got our sound ones. Uh, uh, atmospheric improvements, uh, textural improvements, uh, textures, new textures would go right here, but we're on PS4, so we don't get those. Lighting mods. Uh, then I moved, okay, I moved Junk is Junk and Ellie's Tweaks and Fixes down because this is the section for menu changes. And I remember in the last video I mentioned Junk is Junk. If you want things sorted the way that I have them sorted, then you should put Junk is Junk right before Ellie's Tweaks and Fixes. And that, um, if you do it in this order, then pre war money and the Nuka Kid tokens and the Subway tokens and uh, all the cigarettes, except for cigars and cigar boxes, they'll get sorted into miscellaneous if you do it in this order. If you switch them, then all that stuff, every, pretty much everything you can't like generally use is just junk. So uh, those are your two choices. So if you don't want your pre-war money and all that stuff, then, uh, or um, the cigarettes or anything, then just put junk is junk after that one. And then it'll sort all of that into junk. Uh, but that's that's a preference thing. But this is where sorting and menu changes go. Then it's HUD. Uh, then it's character animation stuff. Uh, then it's new weapons and armor that you can't craft. Then it's new benches, which are those. Uh, then it's chem bench mods, which are those. Uh, then it's other crafting. Uh, it, actually, this one is uh, it goes in a section that I noticed this last time I looked through it and it was mods that add new recipes to your benches. Now this is, this is chem bench stuff, which is different, but then this is actually at the cooking station, but it adds all these new recipes. So that's where that goes. I mean, that's where I had it before, but it's still where it goes. Then it's uh player homes and, and um, settlement changes and, and air landmass area changes, uh, which includes all the interiors and then immersive looting as well. Then there's, uh, Weapon and armor uh, changes, upgrades. So the Chinese stealth armor, unlock ballistic weave, weapon and projectile range, see through your scopes, uh, choose your scope vision, detach weapon mods, uh, scrappable legendaries. Now this, these are also, I put this one kind of between these two because, or these two sections, scrap and weapon mods because it's kind of both. So that's, you know, that's a good philosophy to get into. If you think it fits into two sections that are right next to each other, then put it right between them. And then it's scrapping mods. Uh, so scrap that, more scrap from junk, scrap that settlement, extras living dead, time scale. Uh, that needs to go low. I have noticed that it won't work if you don't put it pretty low. Um, so I just put it right above UCO, which if you don't know, UCO is absolutely 100% supposed to go at the very bottom of your game. Right here. This is pretty much always reserved for UCO. The only time I've ever put anything below UCO is when I've wanted to change something that UCO overwrites. Then I'll slap just that one or two things after UCO. And in my first load order, it was the that um, wardrobe malfunction mod that I ended up getting rid of because it overwrote wardrobe malfunction overwrote the UCO function of, of changing the color of helmets. And I didn't like that. I wanted to be able, if I was going to change the color of my armor, I wanted to be able to do it with my helmet too. So, so I got those detection shades instead. But anyway, that's my new load order. Uh, so far it's working okay. Um, and like I said, I was able to go to uh, Abernathy Farm and say, come back and save and not get the zero kilobyte error. So I think I'm doing okay. I've done a little decorating around the house, so you, you'll probably see. I'll go over in more detail on one of my building videos about what I've been doing in my house. But there was another tip I wanted to give you. If you're combating the zero kilobyte saver and you're worried, like if you've run into it and you're not, you're still kind of working on it, and you have that, uh, if I definitely suggest you, if you if you're playing in survival, I definitely suggest getting this save mod, uh, saving in survival. Um, but one of the things about the zero kilobyte save error is that it doesn't really like auto saves. It likes standard, it doesn't like auto saves and it doesn't like exit saves. That's why I suggest if you're playing on PS4, 
in survival mode, you should get this save mod at 100% absolutely because this mod will actually create a regular save for you, not an exit save, not an auto save, which are generally the only two things you can get out of a survival playthrough. Um, but if you're dealing with zero K, then what I would suggest you do is there's kind of a process with these that if you're, if you're running around, you're doing stuff and you're kind of, if you're doing a playthrough where you're kind of testing to see what might trigger the zero KB save error or what you might be doing that caused the zero KB save error. Um, and you're, you're, so you get to that point where you're like ready to save and you're like, okay, here's the test. What I would suggest doing is performing an auto save just to test and make sure that it'll save and that you're not going to get the error. And then if it saves and you don't get the error and you can kind of, you know, brush the sweat off your head and be like, okay, I'm still good. Then you give it a minute because it, it kind of takes a minute for that, for the system to kind of refresh from, from saving it right then. Then I would, if you got a successful autosave, then I would immediately do a regular save and just save your game fully right there because that save is going to load the cleaner than any other save on your system. Any of your autosaves, autosaves are fine uh, to kind of keep your progress. And if you have to load an autosave because like your game crashes or some crap like that, then I would, then you can do it. Um, and it's not, it's just, it's, it's just slightly more risky is really where it lands. So, um, so that's what I would do if you're, if you're dealing with zero KB and, and you're having to do system resets and check out your mods and whatever, whatever, then I would, once you're ready to save and give it a test, I would do an auto save. And if that works out, then I would do a regular save because then if you do have to go back and revert your save, it'll be a complete save file, a regular, good, old fashioned save file, not a quick save, not an auto save, not an exit save, a full on save file. And those are really the, the least likely to get corrupted when you're playing. So, um, and then the reason to do an auto save first is so that you don't test on your save file and save over it and lose it. See, you see how this works? You see what I'm getting at? So you test it here. If it works, then you save over your save, uh, your full on game save. So that's pretty much all the progress I've got so far. I've got some, this is the only drawback to Underground Railroad is you get people walking through your house because these, like I said, it's an immersive fast travel system. So all the NPCs in the game, they recognize these manholes as, as faster ways to follow, to get to their destinations. So that's really the only drawback to, that, to this mod. Um, at least that, as far as I'm concerned, maybe somebody else has got some other complaints, but, um, thank you. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a like. I w like I said, load order is a living thing. Uh, I will continue to update as I make changes to my load order. Um, also I noticed not a lot of you are watching the enabling video. I don't know if you've been checking out these updates that I've been giving or not, but a lot of people are just watching the load order, the installation and load order video, and then just cruising along. You should watch the enabling video too. Uh, I want to put that out there. I've added as much, as many flags as I can find to say, hey, watch this next video too. It's part two for a reason. There are certain times you should enable certain mods when you're starting a brand new playthrough and you shouldn't just like download 90 mods, which I'm working with 90 mods right now. You shouldn't just download them and then dump them all onto a save. Just like enable all of them and then just start playing. That's a almost a guaranteed way to a get a game crash and B have a lot of glitches in the game and C run into this zero kilobyte save error if you're on PS4. So, don't do that. Watch the enabling thing. And if you're going to add mods to your existing load order, then you should still do it kind of in a way. You can add them to an existing save. That's fine. You don't have to start a new playthrough every time you add mods. But you should still add them in the way that I explained in the first video. You should 
uh, clear the cache on your system. You don't have to do a system, like a full rebuild on it or anything, but just clear clear the cache. Go in, download like one mod that you want to add, and then disable it immediately, and then put it into your load order where the framework says it should probably go. Maybe give it some thought. Give it some real thought. Put it in there, and then turn off your game and clear your memory again. Then come back in, enable that one mod, and load up your save. Run around. If it's something you can ch test right away, then go test it. Like if, if you do like a workbench mod or something, you go, okay, well, I want to see if that worked. And I added ballistic weave, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to check and see if I can add ballistic weave to my armor. Perfect. Now, then you should save your game again because then you have a fresh save with that mod functioning properly. And then you add mo another mod to that save if you're going to add more than one. And you just kind of roll forward like that it, it carefully and slowly if you're going to add mods to an existing game. Um, all right, anyway, I hope these videos are helping people understand. Like I said before, read the framework. It's linked all over my channel. I will link it in this video just like I have with every other mod load order video. It's links in the comments, links on my about page. Link is on my uh, banner at the top of the screen. The link's up there. Read it. If you're going to mod, read that. It will tell you everything you need to know. And then everything else you learn from like me and people on forum threads and stuff should be stuff like, hey, what order do I put all... If I want to load all the interiors, what order do I put those in? I learned that on a thread. So, there. But everything else I learned from that document, go read the document. If you're not reading the document and you're just listening to me, then I don't want to hear anybody complaining about the game crashing, all right? I'm just not going to take responsibility for any of it. Anyway, if you liked the video, click like, uh, consider subscribing, uh, and if you want to get notified of when I upload a video, including all of these precious little mod loader tutorials, uh, then hit the bell icon. And I'm probably going to record another video here shortly about... Ooh, what I've been promising everybody, building in the lower level of the Underground Railroad. So, um, see you next time.